Hello, everyone. So this this is actually the video that was going to happen after the Santa video I made, in which I said it wasn't literally about actual Santa. It was about a point that was being made, and Santa was just the means by which to make that point. Today, I want to make a point about something, and I feel like the best way to illustrate that point is to use the 1998 Jim Carrey film, The Truman Show. Because this, this year, all year, I've been having what I feel like are these little epiphanies in my own life. Some things have been dawning on me, actually almost seemingly continuously all year, even back to what the media is now referring to as the before time, which they're actually calling anything prior to March the before time now, I've noticed. But... It led me to rewatch this movie, and I hadn't seen it for a really long time. I'd watched it several times in the past, probably, I don't know, half a dozen times or something. But now I've watched it in that hindsight is 2020 way that's, I got something out of it this time that was completely different than any other time that I've watched it. And so that's what this video is about to be. It's just something that I feel really compelled to talk about, and it's actually kind of hard to talk about, so, so I don't know. Here we go. If, if you haven't seen The Truman Show, this video is totally going to spoil it completely. So for those people who have not seen it and don't want it spoiled, maybe come back to this later. If you, you have seen it or you just don't care, here we go. Basically, The Truman Show is about a man who was adopted by a corporation as a baby, and he's walking around in a world that he doesn't realize is actually a giant Hollywood studio set where everything he does all day long, 24 hours a day, is being secretly filmed on an intricate network of 5,000 hidden cameras. And every person around him, from his parents to his wife to his best friend to even the strangers he bumps into on the street, they're all actors. They're all playing a role in his life. So he's being secretly filmed his entire life since he was actually in his mother's womb and has grown up in this false reality completely his entire life. And at the beginning of the movie, it's, it seems like he doesn't really recognize fully that this is the situation that he's in. The director is Kristoff, and in the opening scene of this movie, the very first line of the film, you have Kristoff saying, We've become bored with watching actors give us phony emotions. Everybody who's watching is already being manipulated from the moment the show begins. On purpose by design, because it's part of the because it's part of what is being illustrated from the second this movie begins till the credits roll. And the statement also makes this claim that Truman's emotions, because he's the star of the show, no matter how manipulated they are, are still somehow real, right? Because that's not an actor with phony emotions. It pushes this message that you can be completely manipulated and all your emotions can be manipulated too, but it still counts as genuine. Even though at the very best you could describe this movie as gaslighting, and that's in the very best uh, scenario for what's going on in this film. It's actually a really disturbing, if you, if you sit and even think about the plot of this movie for five minutes, it's really, really messed up. I mean, this is getting the audience to accept not only watching a man get manipulated his entire life from the time that he is born, actually before he's born, and making the audience complicit in that, but also they're being manipulated too, so everyone's being manipulated. That's kind of the message here, and that's from the moment the film starts. That somehow we're just all okay with sacrificing a baby for entertainment. Which, interestingly, Truman's first line, which he thinks he's saying to himself in the privacy of his own bathroom, just by the way, but he's being secretly recorded even in there, um, is about how he's gonna have to be eaten. Just, I don't know. Damn it. That's an order. Take from that what you will. Kristoff continues that while Truman's world is somewhat counterfeit, there's nothing fake about Truman himself, which is a lie. Uh, because we're being told right away Truman lives in a completely manipulated environment. So all of his actions and all of his reactions to everything that's happening are programmed. I mean, Truman is through and through a psychologically manipulated person. We as an audience throughout this film only get to see glimpses of who he wanted to be or who he may have been if he wasn't being constantly manipulated into the, the role that he plays in his life by every person in his life, all of whom are complicit in conditioning him to behave in certain ways which he has been programmed to behave. 
So he's a slave. Truman's a slave. This movie is about slavery. He's a slave who doesn't realize he's in bondage because his prison has all the appearances of what he's been told is a normal, expected life. And because it doesn't literally blatantly look like a prison or a cage or a cell or whatever, he doesn't fully recognize that's what he's in, but his life is a prison and he is a slave inside of it. And the, and the whole world is watching this. And Kristoff goes on to say that the, a lot of viewers, many viewers like to leave Truman on all night for comfort, which actually says a lot more about the people watching Truman than Truman himself. It, it just sounds like Stockholm Syndrome to me. We get introduced to this cast of the basic characters. We have his wife, Meryl, who comes on and tells everyone there's no difference between her private life and her life married to Truman as an actress on The Truman Show, which in one sense makes sense because she never probably gets to leave the place, but she calls it a noble life. So playing the role of a character in a loveless sham marriage who psychologically manipulates her tricked fake husband into a false reality is now being defined as a lifestyle, which the audience again accepts. I mean, the, the plot unfolds and we find out this woman is actually trying to coerce Truman into having a baby with her so they can have the first on-air conception and continue this cycle into another generation of continuously filming another life. So that's not a noble life, it's a noble lie, but she calls it a truly blessed life because it actually has the blessing of the masses. The majority of the world that participates through watching this whole twisted thing as quote-unquote entertainment. But if that's not sick enough, Truman's so-called best friend Marlin, a man who wears an earpiece so Kristoff can feed him his lines, comes on and says, well, it's all true, it's all real, nothing is fake. Nothing you see on the show is fake, it's merely controlled. Which, I, I don't know, I feel like that's a semantics argument, because I'm pretty sure it's not just merely controlled, it's completely controlled and therefore it's fake. So... <laughs> 5,000 hidden cameras placed throughout this fictional set. Even Truman's wedding ring has a camera in it. Everyone else on the show is a paid actor. They all take cues from Kristoff. And all of his interactions with people have been programmed to further program him to continue his role on this show and not try to leave. As it continues, you see him receiving fake news, not just on the radio, but through the actors who've been told what to tell him to get him to accept the things that aren't passing the reality sniff test. I mean, it's as if there are all these hints that he's living in a fake world, but every single person around him has been so programmed and conditioned to reinforce Truman not asking questions about how obviously made up things are that they're all using psychological and emotional manipulation techniques to keep him from even asking questions let alone figuring out the truth. I mean, at one point, you even see a sign in the school library about how the materials are not allowed to be taken home, even though it's a set. So the only person that would even think about taking home the materials would be, what, Truman? Right? As if there's anything in that library that's not a completely controlled version of everything. Whatever they want him to think, whatever the lens is that he's supposed to view the world through, he is surrounded by all the time. And it just gets reinforced through all of these actors around him. Why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. Truman was so programmed and so conditioned that by the time he turned 18, he just accepted the reality with which he was presented and he never attempted to leave this place that he's in. So the audience knows already that everything's fake, but we get our first whiff of just how conditioned Truman is to accept this fake reality when a studio light falls from the top of the set and crash lands on his street. And it's obviously a studio light and it's labeled Sirius 9 Canis Major. So it's the dog star, which anything else that Freemasons or David Icke might say about it, the point that I'm trying to make for the purposes of this video is that Truman is not only the star of the show, he's basically a trained dog. What would you do if I said I didn't want meatball today? I'd ask for identification. See you tomorrow, Truman. Probably. <laughs> yeah. So he is the dog star. And 
As soon as he gets in his car after this happens, the radio announcer gives him a fake cover story about how a plane is shedding parts over Sea Haven, which is perfect because it's just another level of conditioning in the fear of travel, which plays into the continuous goal of further conditioning Truman not to ever try to leave Sea Haven. And it probably is something that happens to him on a daily basis. They had to keep conditioning him not to leave. And dogs are prominently featured throughout the movie in this way. In fact, at the beginning of this scene, you have the neighbor's dog, Pluto, named for the god of the underworld, just by the way, jumping on Truman right before this light falls. Then when he gets into town before work, he goes to buy his magazines, which he apparently does every day. And the person in front of him in every scene that that happens, you'll notice, always buys a dog fancy magazine. It's another reference to this dog star which is Truman, conditioned, programmed, just like a dog. I mean, the second time he does it, there's a man standing behind him holding up a newspaper, blazing the headline, Who Needs Europe? So it's more media conditioning for Truman not to leave the island. I mean, even the acronym on the bus system for Sea Haven is Sea Haven Island Transportation, which spells sit, as in sit, ubu, sit, good dog. Sit, ubu, sit, good dog. <laughs> Everything in the world around him is used as constant reinforcement for what Truman is supposed to think and feel and do to be and exist in this reality that he's in. And it's, it becomes apparent very fast that fear and trauma-based programming are the primary ways that they are doing that to him. Right at the beginning, his co-worker tries to get Truman to go sell insurance on some imaginary island that doesn't exist to reinforce Truman's fear of the water, which they've programmed into him since he was little. When Kristoff wrote Truman's dad out of the show by having him drown when Truman was a little kid, so he would be forever afraid of the water and not leave Sea Haven, right? There's even a scene where he's telling his supposed best friend Marlon that he wants to get out of his insurance job and travel and see the world and Marlon spends the whole time telling him how great his job is because it's a desk job and everyone knows that's the greatest and he should just stay put in his obviously unfulfilling life which is not what a real friend should do but it's what people do to each other in real life all the time I mean I feel like this scene is straight out of probably many people listening right now's lives it's it's happened to me and mine and it literally takes place on a road that goes nowhere it's a dead end road basically anytime truman questions the status quo even a little bit there's always some actor or the television is there or the radio there's always some media or some person that's there to reinforce the status quo and reinforce the program to really bring this point home, there's a flashback scene to a college dance where Truman wasn't allowed to dance with the girl he actually liked, but they're playing the T-Rex song 20th Century Boy in the background, which features the chorus 20th Century Toy, I Want to Be Your Boy, 20th Century Toy, which is about Truman, but it's really not just about Truman. It's actually just really a statement on humans as a psychological product of the 20th century in the programming that took place through the advent of Hollywood and television and later the internet. And there's so much that can be said about media programming. I mean, it first of all fills people with lack. <laughs> I mean, this idea that's constantly being put out there that you need something all the time. You're hungry, eat all this crap, you know, or you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not skinny enough, whatever. You know, here's what's important. Here's what you should think and feel is important. Here's what you shouldn't think about or think is important. And oh, live your entire life fearing death. Just by that's another one. Definitely put that in there. I mean, this is how media has been used. I mean, Aaron even was looking through the newspaper archives and came across an ad for a face mask, which makes me giggle like a little kid because they called it a toilet mask. And I get it, that's just bathroom, but it's funny. It's just women walking around wearing toilet masks on their face because they were told to feel bad about something that was wrong with themselves and that this was a problem that they needed a toilet mask to solve. Whatever it is, I've got just the cure for it. There's a sensational sale going on at Watson's. Oh, I wish I could, but it's just impossible. 
You've no idea how much I've got to do. Remember, I haven't got your dream kitchen to make things easier. Movies and then later TV especially programmed people to see the world around them in a very specific way. But it doesn't even end there. It doesn't end with the viewer. That's not the end of it. They turn around and project those images on other people. So it's everybody walking around projecting all this stuff they've been programmed with on everybody else around them. I had a friend in college who used to get into fights with her husband. They were very, very much in love. But when the anniversary would come around, they would get into these fights because he didn't do the things that guys in the movies did. And it made her feel like he didn't care about her because she was comparing it to all this programming, to all this media programming. So these images come out of the TV, they get filed away in people's brains, and then they get projected out onto the reality. And so what people are seeing is not actually what's there, right? It's through the lens of this programming, which twists everything. It makes you see everything a little different. It makes you see it off from what it actually is. It taints your view of what you're looking at. I mean, I, okay, we could argue all day that actually what you're what you're seeing is not ever going to actually be what's really there because everything you see is just sense data that your brain has to interpret through your eyeballs. So your brain is never directly experiencing reality because it's in your skull. But that's like a whole other level of discussion that we've actually, I think, had on this channel already before. But we'll probably have it again because <laughs> it's true. I mean, the map isn't the territory. But so back to this film, it becomes very obvious that Truman may be called Truman, but he's not a true man because he's a programmed, conditioned dog, basically. And so is everyone else on the set and actually everyone behind the set and everyone watching the movie, all the people they show in the audience of the movie themselves, they also, they are too. And the message is this, that people's lives and the realities that they live in aren't their actual lives. It's this programmed, made-up version of who people think they're supposed to be, a lot of it based on a bunch of stuff that has been projected onto them by media and then the people around them who've been subjected to that, and then they're projecting it back on other people, and then it becomes these loops of, of program projection, basically. People are just projecting onto one another what they've been told to believe about themselves and reality through a lot of it through the media which Marshall McLuhan said is the message, right? The media is the message, the media is the massage. It's both, it's both the massage and the message. It's massaging in the message. So it's both. And that's what the Truman Show is illustrating. It's this basic setup that we're all in, in a very comedic and lighthearted way. So it doesn't seem as horrible as it actually is. But when you think about it and you watch this film, what you're actually watching is a horror film. That's actually what it is. I mean, in the first 10 minutes, you have his wife tossing in an ad for a chef's pal kitchen accessory. Then you have his best friend doing a commercial for beer. And then you have two elderly twins that push Truman up against an advertisement on the sidewalk, which apparently happens either on a daily basis or most days. That's just something that happens. And every viewer that they show who, who watches the Truman Show has purchased Truman Show items. There's a lady they show at one point ignoring her real baby so she can watch the Truman Show while her other daughter is playing with a Truman dollhouse. There's a guy in the bathroom taking a bath in a recreation of Truman's bathroom, if you look. He's got the same shower curtain and all that jazz. He even has a framed picture of Meryl with the American flag on it, which I think is just another big fat clue about the creation of a global culture through media and this idea of who people should be, like that's the perfect wife, right? But it isn't just items that we sell ourselves and each other through this process. It's also ideas and images and then all the thoughts and feelings that those ideas and images invoke inside of us. And you can apply this to anything, anything from people comparing their real life relationships to rom-coms to telling each other to buy things that none of us really need or that we aren't afraid enough of certain things, especially including death, especially that, to parents telling kids not to dream their actual dreams because they've already compared their kids' dreams to what's been presented on TV or what society will deem acceptable 
or what they thought they weren't good enough to do so maybe their kids won't be good enough to do it either they're going to put that into their kids and make them think they're not good enough because they can't dream of themselves being good enough it's a whole thing here and now that social media is here why we've just become really adept at programming ourselves and and as you can see some people have chosen to really just put themselves inside a box inside another box it's in a box it's in another box inside of a box i don't even know now this movie was released over two decades ago now which is kind of amazing to believe because it doesn't feel like that time has become kind of wonky but everything that i'm saying has only become so much more obvious when you take a look around <laughs> and it's ironic i guess i can't say funny it's not really funny it's actually it's all sick but it's ironic because even they even put in there a scene where the girl that truman actually legitimately fell for who tried to warn him how fake everything was how she's treated i mean obviously they kick her off the show when she tries to tell him the truth her pretend dad tells Truman they've tried everything with her, including hypnosis, and it did, none, of, none of it worked, so she has schizophrenia. Because when you question everything, when you question reality and start determining how fake a lot of it is, that means you just must be insane, right? You must have a mental disorder when you start actually doing that. The battle for the mind of North America will be fought in the video arena, the video drum. But on the flip side, just this week, somebody told me that something they saw on TV deeply affected them. That was the phrase they used. They were deeply affected. It wasn't something that actually happened physically to them in the actual reality they walk around and breathe in. It was just something that happened on a screen that they simply saw and heard about. The television screen is the retina of the mind's eye. Therefore, the television screen is part of the physical structure of the brain. And I mean, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it because I think it needs to be blatantly stated that if they hadn't seen that, that thing on the screen, they wouldn't have been deeply affected by it. It wouldn't even have been part of their actual reality. They would not have experienced it. Because meanwhile, that same thing I missed because I don't have the news and I didn't watch it and I didn't see it. So it was not a factor in my reality because it literally did not exist for me. I wasn't affected by it at all until they told me they were affected by it. And then I was affected by the story of them being affected. Therefore, television is reality. And reality is less than television. I've been told that I'm not affected in the appropriate ways by people who I don't think are affected in the appropriate ways because they're not questioning anything that they're being told about anything. They're just accepting everything. They're accepting everything they've been presented with without any questions at all of their own in any way. So their entire reality is being crafted, molded, and poured right into their head and then projected out of their eyeballs onto everything. And that's what they live in. <laughs> Do you wanna know how I did that? I'll tell you, they're on a loop. They go around the block, they come back. They go around again. They just go round and round. Round and round. You know, I invited Rita and Marlon for a barbecue on Sunday. I'm going to make my potato salad, and I need you to remind me that we need more charcoal. Are you listening to a word I'm saying? And everybody seems to have forgotten a very basic truth about reality, and that basic truth is this. If there are 7 billion people on this planet, or 8 billion, or however many billions of people there are, that means there are 7 billion different realities being experienced every day because no matter who you are and what you do even if you have a twin and you guys go to all the same places all day long and eat all the same foods the reality that you're in and the reality that twin is in are still not going to be a hundred percent the same ever people can't even agree on exactly what blue is okay we all have a different universe that we live in the universes overlap and coincide but they're all different you can never fully be inside someone else's head. Right now, as I'm saying this to you, in whatever this crazy clown time that 2020 is, okay, that's billions of different realities that are being experienced every single day. Who are you? I am the creator of a television show. Then who am I? You're the star. I know you better than you know yourself. Never had a camera in my head. Even with all that, 
that stuff they're trying to do to make everything all homogenous or whatever, it's still, it's never going to be. There's not one size fits all reality for anyone because there's over 7 billion different realities simultaneously existing every day. There are people who actually still believe that the entire purpose of life is to get up every day and do a programmed set of deeply ingrained behaviors in a certain order and then just go to bed at night so they can sleep, then turn around, get up, and do that same set of ingrained programmed habits over again the next day. And that's just life. That's what life is. There's no greater purpose in life than to just do that. I mean, if we haven't gotten to a point where people are free enough to ask the question, why am I here? And then go seek out the answer to that question without being manipulated from every possible angle that they can be their entire lives away from being able to find whatever the truth is to that for them, then what, what is the point? That's not free. That's not free will. That's not freedom of choice. That's not being free, is it? I mean, in this society, we spend our whole childhoods being programmed by everything around us. And then it almost seems to me, from my adulthood and most of the people that I've known, we spend our entire adulthoods trying to undo that <laughs> and find out who we really are and fix the things that got broken when we were little. And for a lot of people, that's a pretty long list of things. It was for me, it still is, things that I have to deal with and have been trying to fix and go through and wade through and go swimming in, in the deep, dark waters of the stuff that's down in there, the things that I had to go through. And I mean, that, that, that doesn't seem right, does it? That that's life? <laughs> that's how it is? It seems wrong. Why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. The Hague for Kristoff. Hello. The fact that we haven't gotten to a point where more people feel free to even ask the question of what the point is for themselves or realize how pointless the existence I just described is. I think just right there, that's a, a large part of why things are the way they are now. Anyway, I hope this, I hope that made sense. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon.